Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. One of my main themes today is we must stop doing what's right to get something and do what's right because it's right. I want people to sign up to do what's right. I'm talking about in your heart, sign up to do what's right because it's right, even if you never got a result. Thank you, Lord, for the word today. I think it's uh, an important word, and so I trust you for a very special anointing on this word and that everybody will be very attentive, that the enemy will cause no distractions. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we started talking last night about time and how we all have a certain amount allotted to us. Some people live longer than others, but while we're here, we all get 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yet some people accomplish a great deal in their life and some people don't accomplish much of anything. And we're all busy. I wore my I'm busy tag last night. You know, I'm busy. We wear it like a badge. We think our busyness is an excuse to not do the things that we should be doing. And so I, I talked last night about how God has not called us to be busy, but he's called us to be fruitful. And not only does God want us to be fruitful when times are easy and good, but God especially wants us to be fruitful when times are tough and hard. I'm going to show you a scripture in just a minute that says the person who is rooted in the right place, which is in Christ and in his love, can continue to bear fruit in a whole year of drought. That means you can have a whole year's worth of trouble, constant trouble, one trouble after another trouble for a whole year, and if you're rooted in the right place in God, you can continue to bear the fruit of the Spirit and be a blessing to people all the while that that's going on. Just like we think that being busy is an excuse to not do the things that we know we should be doing, we also think that I'm having problems is an excuse to stop being nice and kind and walking in the fruit of the Spirit and loving people and giving and going to church and studying the Word and all kinds of other things. Let me tell you something. If we don't do what's right in hard times, we're certainly never going to do what's right in good times. So today I want to talk to you about doing the right thing all the time. There's never a time when it's not right to do the right thing. Can I say that again? There's never a time when it's not right to do the right thing. Or there's never a time when it's all right to do the wrong thing. <laughs> Maybe we understand that better. There's never a time when it's all right to do the wrong thing. Now, if we're ignorant and we don't know right from wrong, then that's another story. God will work with us and he'll educate us. But I need to remind you this morning that when you hear truth, you become responsible for what you hear. So if you don't want to have any more responsibility, then my goodness, don't come back tonight and don't come back tomorrow. We're not going to let you leave now that you're here today, but don't bother coming back because you're going to hear some stuff that's going to kind of mess your little nice tidy life up a little bit and you're going to think oh oh see some of you found out last night that you've got to make some adjustments in your life if you want to be the fruitful person that God wants you to be well some people are real thrilled about that and they'll go home and do it but then there's many other people who still will not be willing to make those changes and I have to be honest with you and tell you that if God is dealing with you through what I'm saying and you have clear understanding that God is asking you to do something and you still persist in not doing it, then God will have to ramp up the consequences. Don't be so excited. <laughs> and he does it because he loves us. He does it because he loves us. How many of you would just love it if your children would listen, would do what you tell them to do just based on your word. 
But wouldn't you just love it if you could go and say now, listen to what mom's gonna say. I want you to do blah, 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 and I don't want you to do da, da, da. And they would say, got it, no problem. I'm tracking with you, mom, dad. I know you're wise, I know you love me. I'm all in. But how many of you also realize if you tell your children several times and they still won't do it, that you then have to touch their circumstances. <laughs> Come on now, and you, you know, it, to be honest, it hurts you worse than it does them. It was more punished for, for me to ground one of my kids for a month than it was for them. Because I preferred that they be out and about <laughs> and things be peaceful at home. <laughs> Amen? So, we have to get over this doing what's right when somebody's looking. Come on, how much time do you waste at work playing on the internet when nobody's looking? Don't be a Christian thief. Ooh. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If that was your company, how would you want people to respond? Yeah, well, I won't go there. <laughs> I can tell that's not where you want to go, so I'll, I won't go there. But we have to start doing the right thing because God is always looking. I, I think that's something we don't get, that God is always looking. He's everywhere all the time. And so I, I, I can't live to impress people because if I'm doing that, then I'm gonna do one thing when they're looking and another thing when they're not. Come on. I don't wanna be the kind of person that just does what's right when I have to. If I think I'm gonna get in trouble if I don't, I wanna be committed to righteousness because we have been made right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have rightness in us and we just need to turn it inside out and begin to follow what's really in our heart to start with. You know, before you receive Christ, you can do a lot of stupid stuff and it doesn't bother you too much. Doesn't make you feel, you don't feel bad when you gossip about people. Doesn't bother you. You can take office supplies home, hide them in your lunch bag, take them home, don't bother you. I mean, you're just like, well, they don't pay me enough anyway. Bless God, I'm taking them home. Come on, we do all kinds of stuff. You know, you can be married and flirt with somebody else. That don't bother you too bad. But let me tell you something. You, you go and get really saved. Ooh, buddy, you ain't gonna do that stuff anymore and it not bother you. You may do it, but it'll bother you. <laughs> and we need to learn to pay more attention to the bothering because that's really God just crying out in us, I've got a better life for you. I've got a better plan for you. I've got so much for you, I've got so much peace, I've got so much joy. Don't live with the conflict of a guilty conscience all the time. Amen? Now God is merciful and God is gracious and thankfully there's no limit on his forgiveness. But anybody, now listen to me, anybody who really loves Jesus, you're not gonna live like that. You're gonna be determined to learn how to do what's right, not because you're gonna get something else from God if you do what's right, but because it is right. One of my main themes today is we must stop doing what's right to get something and do what's right because it's right. I want people to sign up to do what's right I'm talking about in your heart, sign up to do what's right because it's right, even if you never got a result. And I'll tell you a story to help you understand it. When God first called me to teach Bible study, I had a full-time job and a lot of responsibility and I was having a very difficult time finding any time to study. And you know, God called me before I knew anything don't really know why he did it that way, but it's God's business who he uses. And, but I did have enough sense not to try to teach anybody if I hadn't studied first. 
And so I needed more time to study. I felt like there was a real call on my life and that I was gonna someday do the kind of things that I'm doing today. Don't even know why I believe that, but God gave me a gift of faith. I was not a very good candidate, the least likely person to do it, but when God plants something in your heart, you can have a, a zeal and a passion that goes beyond common sense. And so I felt that God wanted me to quit my job, which meant that we would not have enough money every month to pay our bills. Dave had a good job, but I made as much money as he did, so our income was gonna be cut in half. So at first I didn't quit my job, I got a part-time job, which is kind of humorous when I look back now, how often we don't give obedience, we give a sacrifice. I thought I would sacrifice my full-time job and get a part-time job, which left me in a position where I could still take care of myself. We're trusting God, but honey, we got a backup plan. <laughs> Just in case God don't come through. Come on now, that's for somebody. And you know, I, I, don't, I do not recommend doing what I did. You, you don't ever want to do something like this unless you are as sure as sure can be that it's what God is leading you to do. But, so I got fired from my part-time job, which I wasn't the kind of person that got fired. So that was just like God saying, ain't gonna work. Got something for you to do. I need you to start now listening to me. So I was so frightened because we needed 40 extra dollars every month just to be able to pay our bills. And that wasn't for any kind of repairs or any kind of clothes or anything extra. And so for six years, not six days, not six minutes, not six months, for six years after making that great sacrifice that I made, <laughs> we had less than we'd ever had. And I did not understand it. You know, when you do what's right and you don't get a right result right away, come on now, we're gonna have a good time this morning. Come on. When you do what's right and you don't get a right result, most people don't do it very long. They'll do it for a while and then they just think, well, this, you know, this ain't working. So we have to get beyond this mindset of I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing what's right to get something. I, I'm gonna earn something from God by my behavior. That's living under the law. My behavior earns me something from God. Grace is totally opposed to earning. It's not opposed to effort, a Holy Spirit-led effort, but it is opposed to earning. By my effort, God doesn't owe me anything. God doesn't owe me anything or you anything because you pray every morning, because you read the Bible through every year, because you're a dedicated tither, because you help little old ladies across the street. The Bible says we're only doing what we should be doing when we do those things. So God doesn't owe me anything and I need to do what I do because I love him so much for what he's done for me. And therefore, I will continue to do what's right as long as I can breathe just to glorify God. And I hope I get a great result, but if I don't, now, now look at me, here's the thing that God wants me to say to you. We are not responsible for the result. God is responsible for the result, but what I'm responsible for and what you're responsible for is to keep doing the right thing to keep on keeping on and to keep doing the right thing. Well, ultimately I did quit my job and for six years, I mean, I had great garage sale faith. I mean, when my kids needed shoes, I could go with $2 to garage sales and I'd come out with shoes. And you know, it was good for me because I saw God providing for me in little tiny ways. And to be honest, those were some of the six hardest years of my life, but they were also some of the six most exciting. You say, why in the world were they so exciting? Because I was totally dependent on God. And although it was scary to my flesh, it helped me so much spiritually. And I would have to believe God for little things that was almost embarrassing to ask God to do for me because I was a fairly independent, put together, capable woman. 
And to pray for God to give me 12 dish rags was like a little bit like, I feel really stupid doing this. But then when somebody knocked on my door and said, We've, I felt like, I thought, I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but I felt like God said to bring you 12 dish rags. <laughs> I mean, I went berserk. Ah! Well, you know what? Now I can go buy my own dish rags, but those days helped me practically learn the faithfulness of God. See, we can stand here and say, God is faithful, God is faithful. And everybody go, yeah, God is faithful. But you know what? Until you experience the faithfulness of God. And we never experience anything with God if we don't need God. So God's gonna keep us in a place of needing him and we have to learn how to like it. Well, during that period of time, I would hear about different blessings that people had. Dave had one, one brother, he and his wife were, had a lot more than we did financially and when they would come and you know, I'd hear about all they were doing, you know, it was just really hard for me not to get down when they would come and visit and, and uh, different people would be blessed and you know, I'd, I'd try to be happy for them but you know what I mean, it's hard when you're very needy and everybody else is being blessed. And so my pastor came by one day and he was out doing speaking and, you know, I, I hadn't got to that point yet. I really wanted to be out and about, but I was still doing my home Bible study. And, and he came by one day and told me this glowing report of the offering that he'd received and how generous it was and how two people had said they wanted to partner with his ministry and they were going to do thus and so every month. And, and then all of a sudden he looked at me and he said, is it okay that I'm telling you this? because we were so needy. And I said, oh yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I was lying, but <laughs> you know, I was trying to be happy. And when he left, I went and threw myself across my daughter's bed and I cried, I cried so hard. I cried and cried and cried. And then I made a decision and a statement. I said, God, I am gonna tithe and give offerings till the day you return to get me, if I never see one result, I'm still gonna do it. And can I tell you something? Things started to change after that. When the devil knows that him messing with our circumstances, now come on, track with me today. When the devil knows that him messing with our circumstances is not in any way gonna change our commitment to righteousness and doing what's right, then he'll go bug somebody else. Now, Luke 12, two and three. Nothing is so closely covered up that it will not be revealed or hidden that it will not be known. Whatever you have spoken in the darkness shall be heard and listened to in the light. And what you have whispered in people's ears and behind closed doors will be proclaimed upon the housetops. Now, you know, I might have to read that several times for everybody to get it, but it's basically saying, don't think that you can do the wrong thing in secret and nobody will ever know about it. So here, here's the bottom line. We're not hiding anything. We're not hiding anything from God. You may keep other people from knowing, but they'll ultimately see the results of it in your life. They may not know what it is, but they will see the results. But God knows. He is all-knowing, all-seeing, ever-present, and all-powerful. And if we can make a decision today that God sees everything, I know this is probably making some people a little itchy in their seats, but this helped me big time that God sees everything and I need to honor him by not living for what people think or what people are gonna say or to impress people, but I need to make a commitment in my heart to do what's right all the time and to understand there's never a time when it's okay to not do what's right and to do it for God and God alone. Not to get anything from God, but just because I'm in love with Him. Whew. Now I could let you go home and it'd be worth you coming. 
bearing fruit in drought. Let's start there. Let's stop being the kind of people that's happy when the circumstances are happy and not happy when the circumstances aren't happy. Can we start there? Can we learn how to endure whatever comes with good temper? Well, I can't help it, I just get upset. No, 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 no. I tell you what, it's amazing who we will throw fits in front of and who we will control ourselves in front of. Come on, you could be right in the middle of the biggest fit you've ever had in your house, screaming and yelling, ranting and raving at your husband and your kids, and if I rang your doorbell, <laughs> let me tell you, we would have a transition so fast, <laughs> it would make your head, what joy! <laughs> Praise the Lord! Wow! Well, what a privilege! Well, you know what? Jesus is already there. Don't get excited because some well-known person shows up that you want to impress. Jesus is the unseen guest in our homes all the time. Jeremiah 17, 8. You know, I don't know if you like this kind of preaching or not, but it's the only way I know how to give it out, so. I guess I figure the people that aren't ready to go on with God won't come, so. Let's look at verse 7 and 8 in Jeremiah 17. Most blessed is the man who believes in, trusts in, and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river, and it shall not see and fear when heat comes, but its leaf shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in a year of drought nor shall it cease yielding fruit. Oh boy, that is a great scripture. Now, so what are we rooted in? We have to talk about that. See, if, I, if, I'm, if my confidence is rooted in the love of God, then I don't have to fall apart when somebody doesn't approve of what I'm doing. That doesn't mean I wouldn't prefer to have their acceptance, but I can go on without it. I can say no to people and yes to God even if I never get invited to their party again because I'm not rooted and grounded in them. They're not my source. <laughs> Amen. But I can go on with God even when other people say, well, if you're going to be that Jesus-y, <laughs> I mean, how Jesus-y is okay. You know, if you're going to be that radical, then you're really not going to fit into our group anymore. Well, then I guess I'm out of the group. But you know what? I've got my own group, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yeah. I decided that a long time ago. And you, you do too. So let's think about it. How easy do we get upset when things don't go our way? How quickly do we get angry? Uh, when we do, how, how long does it take us to calm down? Uh, when we have a rift with somebody, how long does it take to be the first one to go and say, I'm sorry? <laughs> Just think about that a little bit. <laughs> Amen. What's my integrity level like? How much do I keep my word, even when it's hard? Or do I have a habit of telling people I'll do things and then if I don't feel like doing it, I just don't do it? <laughs> you know, worry is total, a total waste of time. You talk about something that's a waste of time. It's worry. You've probably heard me say this. It's like rocking in a rocking chair all day. It keeps you busy, but gets you nowhere. And sometimes I bring a rocking chair up on the platform with me, and I can rock and rock and rock and rock. But I could rock till this time tomorrow, and I'll see you still be in the exact same spot. And that's what worry does. It's useless. doesn't solve our problems. Don't waste your time 
worry. I want to encourage you today to always do what's right simply because it's the right thing to do. Nancy is two years old, but when she was about three months old, something fell on her head and, and the injury basically stunted all of her development and her growth from that point forward. And so she hasn't really been able to, to develop like a normal child since that time. But because of our medical clinics here, she's come back the last two days and they've been able to, to get her the medicines that she needs. They've been able to teach the family how to work with uh, Nancy on, on physical therapy and how to, to, to teach her and train her so that there's a very, very good chance that with these medicines and with you know, the physical therapy that she'll walk someday and that she'll be able to overcome this injury. Nancy's parents have brought her two days in a row because they love her so much and they want her to get the help she needs. On their behalf, as a parent, we just thank you that we can come and help beautiful children like Nancy. Hi, sweetie. You are a beautiful girl. Uh -huh. Yes, you are. Al gezien, frisse impulsen. Joyce Meyer Nederlands op Facebook. Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard these days to find things to worry about. If you turn on the news for even five minutes, you can feel like the world is just spinning out of control. That's why I'm so excited about my new devotional, Trusting God Day by Day. These devotions will help you change your focus from your circumstances to the truth that's in God's Word. You know, it's time for us to enter into the peace that God has made available to us where we can enjoy our lives. And that comes only from trusting God day by day. Begin je dag met God met de 365 overdenkingen voor het hele jaar. Bestel het boek God Vertrouwen van dag tot dag nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.